Betov, today's Daf Yomi is Bamatia Daf Chavav, Bamatia 26, dedicated for Yeshua, for Am Yisrael, on Shushan Purim, Mashmira for the Chayalim, Hatzalah for the Shvuyim. So we had said in our Mishnah, we're going to start on 26A on the top line, Chavav Amalaf on the top line. It said in our Mishnah that if you take something from a new wall, it's from the halfway part of the wall going outside. Then if you find something, you could keep it. Shalom. But if you found it on the halfway point going inwards, that belongs to the owner of the property, Shabal Bayis. So Amar Ravashi, Ravashi taught, Sakina Basar Kata, Mechisa Basar Shenatsia. He said, a knife, we follow after its handle. Meaning to say, if the handle is facing towards the inside, then the people in the house put it there because you hold the knife by the handle. And if the handle is to the outside, then the people from the public put it there. And so too, a wallet follows after its straps. So if that's the case, why does our Mishnah give a different definition? How does Ravashi jive? How does Ravashi's statement dovetail with the statement of the Mishnah that says, it depends where you find it. On the part facing outside, it belongs to the people in the street. And the part facing inside, it belongs to the Baal Bayis. So, why don't we take a different approach? Why don't we look? Why don't we see if the, if the blade is facing inwards or if the blade is facing outwards? Why don't we look to see if the straps are to the outside or straps are to the straps to the inside or straps to the outside? Mar says no, because our Mishnah is not talking about those types of items. Our Mishnah is talking about Udra Vinasla. Our Mishnah is talking about, let's say, a, b- a ball of wool, ball of cotton, or Nazca is a uh, just like a block of a block of metal, not exactly like a coin, not exactly something that has a handle. Tana am I a mehen. We learned to the if the if the wall was filled entirely with this lost object, Hulk, and under those circumstances, that the, the, the two sides split it. Well, Pshita, isn't that obvious? Mar says, no. It's slanted on one side. So Mao the Tema, you might have said, So you might have said that since it's slanted on one side, then you might have said, it re- initially was on, all, entirely on the top, and now it just spilled a, a little bit, to, it like flowed a little bit to the lower one, but really it belongs to the top one. So we don't say that. Okay. Let's say he rented the wall to others. Then if, if the house was rented out to other people, then even if you find it in the house, you get to keep it. Yes, the Gemara... Lazel Basar Basar. Why don't we say that the last renter was there? He's the one who gets to keep it. it. Was he was the last person to rent the property? So it should be his. Milo Tinan. Didn't we learn in the Mishnah and Psachim regarding Maus Shenimto of Nei Sochrei Behema? Let's see if I money in front of somebody who is a animal salesman in Jerusalem. Well, we'll say meiser. We're going to say that on the, that if you find money in front of the people who are selling animals, we're going to say that's always the meiser shani money, because we're going to say most of the people, most of the meat that's eaten in Jerusalem is from meiser shani money. They take their money to Jerusalem, and they're meiser, they're tied, and they purchase animals with it. And a person, uh, person has to consume all that, the, the, what he eats in Jerusalem. And so therefore you give the money to the poor people and, and you purchase the animals with them. So we're going to say that if you find money in Jerusalem, it's in front of the animal salesman. It's probably somebody who had transferred his money to the Meiser Behema. So Bahara Bayes, but if you find it on the Temple Mount, then we're going to say it's cool and now we're going to say it's non-sacred money, even in, during the time of the festival, even though most of the money in the city is miser money, because the p- pilgrims are bringing their miser money to eat with them. Nevertheless, we say that this money was before the pilgrims, it was during the festival, it was before the festivals, and therefore we don't assume 
money on the Temple Mount was the money was the uh, pilgrim's money. Ubirushalayim and in Jerusalem, Bishari Mosa Shana Khulin and Jerusalem the rest of the year it's non sacred. Ubishasarago I call Miser. But during the festival, we're going to say it's all Miser Shani money. But what's the reason? And in Jerusalem, we're going to say that it's not Hulan money if it's on the festival, but it's Meiser Shani money. He says, because all the Shuka Yerushalayim, Asuyim Leschave Yom, because since the markets of Jerusalem are swept every single day, Alma Amrin and Kamai Kamai Azlu, we say that the first ones were swept away, Vahani Achrini Ninhu. And therefore, these, these, uh, this, um, this, uh, Money that was found is not the money that was found two weeks ago was swept away. So therefore, why don't we say the same thing? If you find the lost object in the person's property where there were renters, why don't we say the same thing? Kama kama azo that the first the first uh, the first person left that was swept, and this belongs to the second person, and so therefore the last one to rent should get it. So Amarish Lakish Mishim Bar Kapara could go and also Pundak Israel. No, what's the reason? Why the renters don't get it? Because it was rented to the house was rented to three Jews, and so therefore, since it was rented to three Jews, and and uh, and so therefore, the person who dropped it gave up hope because he doesn't know who to make the request from. Shema Mino. So the Gemara says, if that's the case, why don't we learn from here? Allah Kribbishim Ben Elazar. But the laws like Rabbi Shimon Elazar, which we said yesterday, where he said he finds something in public, even if it's majority Jews, you can keep it. So why don't we say that Rabbi Shimon Elazar said if he finds something in public, you can keep it. We weren't sure if he said this by Canaan, Canaanites or even by Jews. So why don't we learn from here that he says his aloha even by majority Jews, a few bit of Israel. But we don't learn that from here. So therefore, uh, it says, Amar Rav Menashe by Yaakov Kagon Shasu Pundak Moshosha Ovdei Kochavim. He rented out to three idolaters. Rashi says it could even be one idolater. Excuse me. And so therefore, so therefore, since he rented out to idolater, we don't have to return it. So therefore, he gets to keep it. Even though it was even who's rented to three Jews. What's the reason why he could keep it? My time, huh? I would enough for me, the the guy who who dropped from, he would be Miyayish. He would have given up hope. Why? Mamer Amar, he would say, Elani, I know other people with me except for these two these two guys. Amri Kamayo Kamna Zimni Ladurui. I said in front of them several times to return to me. They didn't return it to me. You think you're gonna they're gonna return it now? anyway. If they had a mind to return to me, they would have done it. They're certainly stealing it. So therefore, he gives up hope. And so therefore, even with three Jews, we could say they gave up hope. So even though in general, Rabbi Shem ben doesn't say you could keep it in a place where it's majority Jews, in this case, where there's only three of them, he would say it's okay for you to keep them. Rav Nachman made the Amr of Nachman and why does Rav Nachman adopt this approach? Because he is consistent. Rav Nachman says, let's say you saw a coin on the top of 26B. You saw a coin that fell from two people. You have to return to them. My time. Huh? Why if you see a coin drop from two people? And, and Tosa says, even if it has no sign on it, So even though it has no sign, you still have to return it. Why? The one who, the one who it fell from is not going to give up hope. Since he says there's no other man with me, I'll grab a hold of him, and I'll say to him, So you're the one who took it from me. But for the fact that he says it's by two, but but if there's three people are walking and and they drops it, you don't need to return it. By there are three, he's not obligated to return it. And even if there was a simon on it, that's how the Ritva says, even if there was a sign, he doesn't have to return it. Why? 
for sure give up hope. Since I had two men, two other people with me, each one is going to say, I didn't take it. And so therefore, if there's three, you don't have to return it because the guy gave up hope. But if there's two, you have to return it. I'm a Rava. So now Rava taught, Hi, the Amris, Bishlosha, and Ochayim, Ochayim, that which we said that if you see a coin drop from amongst three people, uh, you don't have to return it. Well, I'm an Eladolais, Beishav, a Pruta. That's only where it's not worth a penny, with Kol Chad Vachad, for each one. Eladolais, Beishav, a Pruta, with Kol Chad Vachad. But if it's worth a penny for each one, it means, say, it's worth three cents, then Chayav Ochayim, then you would have to return it. My time, huh? What's the reasoning? Amor Shutfininu. He'll say that maybe there are partners, Vomi Aishu, and they wouldn't give up hope. And so therefore they didn't give up hope. Look at the Rashi. Amor Shutfininu Basel Maybe they're partners in this coin and they're believed about each other and they're not really suspecting each other. And so therefore, when he touches his, his wall and he doesn't find it, he's not going to give up hope. He'll say, oh, maybe one of the Rashi says, Maybe one of the other guys found it and he's harassing me. He's like playing a trick on me. That's why he's quiet. So therefore, when the other guy, when the guy who found it picked it up, it was before Yeush. Okay, so now we go on. He could damn real turn a version of this as Amarava Avagav the Ace by Al Shava State Prutos. Even was only worth two coins. You have to return it. My time. Amor Shutvinenu. He could say, even if it's only worth two coins, you have to return it. Why? He could say that they are partners. And one of them, and one of them gave up his share to his friend. So now, Amarava, Ra, Sela, Shanafwa, let's you see a coin and you and you take it, not of Ne Yeosh. Let's say you take it before the person who owned it gave up hope. And you take it with the intent to steal it. Amenasla goes over Bakuan. You're in violation of Kuan. What does Kuan mean? It means three prohibitions the prohibition of do not steal, the prohibition of return a lost object, prohibition of you shall not hide from a lost object. And even though he returned it after. The guy gave a pope. Still, he hasn't solved the problem. Matano the Yahweh, Visur David David. Then, he, since he already stole and the guy gave a pope, now it's yours. So you're giving this person a gift, but you still have violated the prohibition of do not steal. Natal of Neye or Shamanas of Sira. Let's say he took it before the guy gave a pope, but he took it with the intent to return it. And then, Lachar Yeish to Skyvalon goes. Well, then after he gave a pope, he intended to steal it. Over Mishum Hashev Tishivain. The violation of the prohibition of you shall return it. Imtin watch and it's and not let's say waited until the owner gave up hope. And then he took it. Eno over He's the only violation of you. You shall not hide. You shall not hide from doing the right thing. Amar Rava Ayman Dachazi did not fall Zuzi Michavre. Somebody who sees Money fall out of his friend's pocket, he falls it in the sand, sees it falling into the sand. He asks, and then he, the other, the person who sees him finds it and takes it. He doesn't have to return to him. My time, she said, the guy who dropped it gave a pope. And even though you see he brings a sifter to the sand, and is sifting it. He says, just like this fell from me. 
probably something else fell from somebody else. So Mishkach Namidi, and I'll find something else. So there's the awareness that just like you drop something, your friends will drop something. So that's an awareness of humility. When when you drop something, then all of a sudden you're aware that just like I dropped something, because the guy could have brought the sandbox before, the, the sifter to the sand before. But he says, no, now that you fall and you see that other people also fall. Matzah b'chanus, let's say you find uh, money in a in a store. Hare elushalo. Then we're going to say he gets to keep it. Matzah b'chanus, hare elushalo. He gets to keep it. And we're talking about a situation that there's no simon rash, he says. Because the person who dropped it gave up hope because everybody walks in there. Let's say he finds it between the the counter and the shop and the and the shopkeeper. Then it's obviously shulchan money. It's obviously the shopkeepers. If ne shulchan, he finds something in front of a table, a money changing table. You could keep it. Between the chair and the money changer table. And then it's obviously the, the money changers. Let's say you purchase fruit from your friend. Or your friend sends him money. Or his friend sends him fruit and then he finds in the fruit money. Then he gets to keep them. If they have money in there had a simon on it, like it was obviously bundled up, so then he can... He has to announce it. I'm Rebbe Lazar, That when do we say Rebbe Lazar says? Remember, what was the case of the mission? If you find it on the counter, if you find it in the uh, in the store, you could keep it. But if you find it between the shopkeeper and the and the counter, then it's the shopkeeper. So what about if you find it on the counter itself? So it says Rebbe Lazar, Afu munachin al gabe So Rebbe Lazar says even if it's found on the counter, that you can keep it. It's not only if the money is on the ground, but even if it's, you found it on the countertop, you can keep it. What's the source? It says, in front of the table, it's yours. But doesn't that imply the opposite of Rebbe Lazar saying, oh, but doesn't that imply that on top of the table does belong to the money counter, so the, to the money changer? But the but the next clause says between the chair and the money ta- changing table belongs to the money changer. Ha which would imply that on the table itself, shalom belongs to the one who finds it. So therefore, from our Mishnah, you can't derive anything. So the Gemara says, well, then how does Rebbe Lazar know this halacha that if you find money on the counter of a store, that the person who finds it can keep it? So the Gemara says, Rebbe Lazar, how does he know this law? Amarava must nisin kashita. Rebbe says that the Mishnah was, was difficult to him. My area, the Tani Ben Akisa Why did it have to list between the chair and the money table? Sheshokhani. Why does it have to say if it's between the chair and the money changing table, it belongs to the money changer? Listen, al shulchan. It could have just said on the table, or inami matzah b'shulchanos. Get the ketani ratio, or it could just say if you found it on the table, like it says in the first clause, matzah b'chanos shalo. So we see from here, shmamina afil menichan al gabe shulchan arayal shalo. So we see from here that Rebbe Lazar is on the position, even if he finds it on the table, he gets to keep it. The person who finds it gets to keep it. So now, hold on, let me stop. we'll go on, but let me stop the recording here.